Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity, and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. In today's video, we are doing our weekly Friday energy update and collective reading video. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Know that simply by being energetically present here, your energy is actively co-creating all of the messages and pieces of information that come through. I also do want to let you know that I channel these collective readings every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and on those times and dates, I also channel an extended version of those readings that is exclusively available through our Patreon community. So if at any point during this reading, you're feeling guided to join the extended Patreon reading, the link to do so is in the pinned comment and description box underneath the video. But for now, I wanted to go ahead and shuffle and start getting into the messages. Now, this might seem a little bit out of left field, but there is a message coming through right away that is seemingly random, although I don't believe that randomness is ever really coincidental. And this maybe not so random message for someone listening is that you may be feeling at times as though you are too sensitive for this world. When you are someone who is extremely sensitive, extremely empathic, it's a very common experience to feel almost like your sensitivity is a weakness at times or like having a certain degree of sensitivity can truly make it challenging to function in the physical 3D world at times. But the message coming through is that you're not broken, you're not weak, you are someone who is highly spiritually blessed and gifted, gifted with this sensitivity that you incarnated here to bring to others. And a secondary message coming through is that you are being divinely protected and guided at this time. You're being taken care of through the expression of your sensitive, beautiful nature into the world. So if you've been feeling anxious about being able to manage your life or yourself in the physical 3D world, given this level of sensitivity, the message coming through is that you are being so supported in the unseen realm at this time because your level of sensitivity is actually allowing you to share some kind of really beautiful gift with the world. Now, for some of you, this might be something you are literally doing or creating. For others of you, this could be more subtle this might simply be the sharing of yourself, the sharing of your frequency just existing in this world. I'm hearing don't underestimate the power of your presence, whether that's your presence in a group of people, in a community, in a workplace, or just on the planet generally. So... Here we have the card Lemuria, creating heaven on earth, it's happening. So what I see with this card is I'm hearing starseed heritage. So you might consider yourself to be a starseed or 
to have a specific spiritual heritage that you really connect with. That won't be for everyone, but for others of you, you might just be feeling not of this world. When you're someone who has a very strong star seed heritage, someone who quite literally is not of this world in a sense, it can be really overwhelming to deal with some of the details and aspects of physical human life experience because you are a natural born creator and feeler and connector and expressor. So when you are doing that within this very dense physical 3D framework, at times it can feel a little bit overwhelming and I don't know why I'm just picking up that someone listening has been going through that recently and again the message coming through here really strongly is that you are being supported in the unseen realm. I'm hearing don't get out over your skis, don't try to think too far ahead, just take that next step forward. Now, there's something else I've been finding recently for our collective here, which is that we are finding increasingly that we're being pushed into radical presence and trust, trust of our inner self, trust of the universe. But of course, those two things are intricately connected But essentially, we're being pushed into this by quite literally feeling blinded to what's coming next, really having no idea exactly how everything is going to be playing out into the future. And I just keep receiving downloads around allowing yourself to remain fully present while trusting that when something needs to be brought to your attention, the universe will bring it to your attention in that present moment. So understanding or really deeply trusting that when you need to know something, you are going to receive that information. Or when you need to take an action, you're going to receive the inspiration to act. That's going to come into your mind. You're going to receive those nudges from your higher self, from the universe, from your spirit guides, whatever cosmic forces you personally connect with. Because a strong message has been coming up around loosening your grip on the details of the future or the aspects of planning that the ego mind might be accustomed to. And the reason you're being pushed into this is because, again, your role is meant to be as the feeler, the creator, the present moment liver, the manifester. And I almost just keep getting this imagery recently around the universe being kind of like your manager or your assistant or someone here who is hired to take care of those details or to bring things to your attention when they need to be brought to your attention, almost like a personal assistant keeping your schedule. But the one keeping your schedule is the universe is your inner self is all of that speaking to you through those present moment intuitive nudges and it's almost like all of that overthinking or all of that over planning all of the over strategizing in a way is really just this baggage that weighs us down from being able to fully hear those intuitive nudges in the moment that are always perfectly given to us, guiding us into that next step forward. So I don't know who has needed to hear this portion of the messages. I wasn't expecting to get this deep into it, but I really hope that this has reached whoever needs it at this time. I am going to be shuffling the traditional tarot cards. So what else can I channel for the beautiful souls listening here? Okay, we have several cards wanting to come out here right away. 
So we have the Six of Wands reversed, the Ace of Cups, but also the Hanged Man. Okay, so interesting. I want to get more on this Six of Wands in the reverse position because there's something out of place about that energy. Maybe it's because it's not your energy. Maybe it's someone connecting to you. I absolutely perceive you as being in this Ace of Cups space at this time where you are moving into this powerful new beginning of your life. Yeah, we have the happy family upright. So this is a very happy, harmonious time of your life. You are opening yourself up to harmonious connections as well, not just romantically, although you are on that union or reunion timeline, meaning you have the ability to connect harmoniously with a romantic counterpart. Now, for some of you, you might be kind of there on that harmonious union timeline, holding space for what you consider to be your ideal counterpart. So you might not yet be settling into that relationship. For others of you, you may have locked that in already. So take this however it connects. But I do see, again, your not only in this harmonious space, but there's a very abundant energy around you as well. I'm hearing spontaneous intuition, spontaneous creativity. So maybe this abundant energy around you has really allowed you to vibrate at such a high level that you've been attracting in some spontaneous inspiration. So recently you may have suddenly felt yourself feeling inspired to new ideas, to new creations. I feel like a lot of this inspiration is happening in like the mental realm. So it's like ideas bursting into your mind kind of suddenly, possibly even randomly. At times you might even wonder how these spontaneous creative ideas actually fit into your life in real time. And yet in contrast to that, there's this heaviness around managing some of the details of your physical 3D life experience. Again, it's like what we described earlier in this reading where you are this beautiful, creative being, this sensitive being. And yet at times the heaviness of the earth plane can feel overwhelming. So maybe this is representing two opposite energies within yourself where you can vacillate between these moments of spontaneously being inspired to new actions, new ideas, new dreams, visions. And then you can also feel the heaviness of the human experience and move between two of those extremes. But what I'm getting is they aren't really two extremes as in being opposites. They actually co- exist because it's your ability to be so creative and so in the moment and to feel so deeply that at times feels like this thorn in your side. Now, of course, it's not really, it truly is a gift, but you're so different from many, many people in this world. I'm hearing the system wasn't built for you, or you might be feeling that way as though you live within a system that wasn't made for the type of spiritual being that you are. But then what I'm getting is that's because you're here to transform the system. You don't fit into it because you're meant to transform it. And maybe that's a major theme of your life, feeling like you're struggling against something because you don't fit into it, but then ultimately realizing that's because it's part of your life purpose to transform that system. And of course, this could apply to so many different specific things within your personal life experience, but I am getting... Something with this six of wands reversed energy, someone feeling like they failed, like they've lost, like they're at some kind of disadvantage here. 
Maybe this is you feeling disadvantaged at times in the world because of your sensitivity, because we also have the angel of love. I'm hearing like I love too deeply or I feel too much. I feel too much for this world. Maybe you feel the pain of the world or the pain of others really deeply, or maybe you just experience all of the highs and lows of life to a much greater degree than many of the people around you. Interesting. So this might leave you feeling unbalanced at times with the angel of balance reversed. Can I get more details on this specific person feeling disadvantaged because of their sensitivity? Well, we have the page of wands. So this is is a card. For some reason, I almost said song. Maybe someone is a musician or there's some kind of song that's really relevant to you right now that you've been playing on repeat or something like that to kind of motivate you or to make you feel inspired or encouraged. But what I'm getting with this card is there's some kind of good news coming. What is this good news? Okay, we have the Eight of Cups reversed. The Three of Pentacles reversed. The Hierophant reversed. And the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so this good news is a little bit complicated or this this positive energy coming into your life is a little complex because I'm getting that you might be feeling very stagnant when you receive whatever this news is. Maybe you're currently in that stagnant state in some area of your life. There is this sense of impatience with the three of pentacles reversed or feeling as though there's time being wasted or things being delayed or something isn't happening fast enough it's like putting energy into something but kind of feeling like you're spinning your wheels is sort of the sense that i'm getting here but i'm hearing that if that's happening it's because all of that's an illusion this sense of stagnancy this sense of delay it's an illusion trying to push you deeper into non-conformity into seeing things from a very different and possibly unconventional perspective. With the Hierophant reversed, it's almost like you're looking at something or some area of your life through the traditional or conventional view. And from that perspective, it looks like stagnancy or failure or delays. But from an unconventional perspective, if you take a really different view at it, it's actually some kind of transformation here. I'm hearing embracing your uniqueness, embracing your unconventionality. So maybe this is just you being very unconventional or doing things very differently from the people around you. And this card is asking you to trust in your unconventional way of doing things because it's actually highly intuitively guided and it's going to bring you a massive shift in good luck or what others think looks like good luck with the wheel of fortune card but in actuality it's alignment putting you in the perfect position to receive this quantum leap of sorts this quantum shift but it comes through the unconventional way through breaking with tradition not doing things the way people may have told you to do them or the way you'd been trained or taught to do them okay so i'm going to be reshuffling here because i want to know more about this wheel of fortune things really beginning to turn positively in your direction do feel free to set some intentions to really clarify these energies while I'm shuffling. Of course, you can set intentions by speaking them aloud, by thinking them in your mind, or by writing them in the comments, whatever feels right for you. Okay, so what is this 
good luck or this really positive turn here. I'm seeing ancient Egyptian symbolism and hieroglyphs. So that might be symbolic for someone. I'm also seeing a pyramid. This could be a crystal pyramid for someone as well, but it reminds me of how a pyramid is a way of channeling and focusing energy. So this unconventional way that you do things is actually your way of channeling and focusing energy, just like that crystal pyramid. So something that you do that might look unconventional or might look unimportant or subtle is actually a powerful way that you clear yourself, like becoming a clearer channel for source energy or focus your energy in some type of way. But I'm hearing that it doesn't look on the surface like it has anything to do with the effect that it has. I know this sounds so kind of mystical, but there is a mystical quality to whatever you've been doing that channels and focuses energy in this way. So this could be something creative you do. This could be a routine like walking in nature, something you do with your physical environment, really anything, but whatever it is for you, it's a way of clearing and channeling your energy and focusing it. I'm hearing in a laser point focused kind of way that allows you to manifest these moments of quantum leap that really astonish others and even get mistakenly labeled as just good fortune or good luck. I'm also picking up that if that message was for you, then you intuitively know how it applies for you. I'm hearing runaway bride and I'm seeing a white dress that is like torn and dirty. And there's this woman who is just like in this state of feeling so wild and free. And it's such an interesting image coming up here. The ocean might be relevant for someone. I'm hearing surrender. So Maybe someone here ended up separating from a traditional relationship or a marriage or breaking off an engagement or a marriage that could be relevant to someone. If that's not the case, this could just represent a feminine or divine feminine who's very much, I'm hearing appearing reckless to others, but so in tune with her deeper feminine nature. So others might be perceiving you I'm hearing like she's lost her mind or like she's being reckless. And yet you have this laser point focused energy and you are so deeply connected to your internal nature at this time. I'm hearing freedom. You've accomplished this level of freedom within yourself and your life. Maybe it's emotional freedom. Maybe it's just this feeling that you have within yourself that's hard to even put words to, but that feels so deeply satisfying. And I'm hearing few are going to be able to understand the freedom that you've attained. I'm hearing someone say, I crashed my life on the rocks. I don't know what that means for someone. Surrender. Once again, we actually pulled the surrender card. So I may be picking up on a feminine energy who's in some state of separation. I'm getting the word fall. This could be the season of fall or autumn, of course, but I'm also hearing fall from grace. So maybe there's a feminine coming through here who's experienced some kind of fall from grace, maybe a fall from grace in the eyes of their family, their community, a particular group of people, their, a lover, maybe a past lover. Maybe there was some kind of ego death wrapped up in this fall from grace because we do have the death card reversed, which does stand for this spiritual transformation. There's been a part of this feminine that's been resisting change. I'm hearing everything has been changing and yet it's ironic because the stability that you desire here is found through the uncertainty. 
It's almost like for a while, a feminine here may have tried to cling on to the known realm, cling on to certainty for that stability, that harmony, that happy family or 10 of cups kind of energy. And yet ironically, you've now discovered that through surrender and embracing the unknown, that is actually how you reach the stability that you crave. This is because through surrender, you establish a deeper level of inner trust because when you surrender, you're essentially saying to your inner self, I'm letting go because I trust you to catch me. I trust you to give me the guidance I need in the moment. I release the need to have all the answers in my own conscious mind right at this moment because I know they will be intuitively fed to be fed to me, nudged to me when I need to receive them. And that powerful mindset shift, that deepening of self-trust actually creates an internal stability. And of course, as within, so without. So as you've been establishing that internal stability through embracing the unknown, through surrender, you confidently surrender because you know you are stable within and that internal stability begins to reflect in your external world. And that's when you start experiencing that very external stability, harmony, longevity in relationships, etc., that you really have desired. And that's what I see beginning to show up for you here. That might be that powerful shift in the tides, that shift in the fortunes here, so to speak. Can I get any other messages for this beautiful feminine energy? You are the queen of wands here. Your magnetism is found between your feminine energy and this deep spiritual transformation. This card is literally sitting between the death card reversed and the feminine card. So there's something very feminine about your aura at this time. And I'm not talking about external appearances. Of course, we all have a balance internally of the masculine and feminine. But when I refer to your feminine magnetism, I'm talking about your grace, the beauty of your energy that runs so much deeper than the skin. This is aura beauty. This is energetic beauty. This is attractiveness at the deepest, most raw meaning of the root word attract within that word attractiveness. You are, you've established the ability to attract because of this shift in your energy, which is really that shift into internal stability that we were talking about. But also part of what makes you so magnetic is a spiritual transformation that's literally broke you open, but also in that breaking open allowed for the revealing of more of your light and many others seem to be perceiving more of that light at this time. We also have this seven of swords. So this can represent avoidance, someone who's being dishonest or pretending to be a friend or something along those lines. And then we have the emperor. So there's two very different masculine energies in your field, divine feminine. There is this first masculine. Now this might be one literal person or just the essence of something in your life that's very avoidant that might pretend to care about you or pretend to be a friend, but is very escapist, especially when it comes to dark times in your life or conflict. This is a person or these are the types of people that will just scatter in those dark moments. But there's also a very opposite masculine energy in your life. And this is the emperor. And the emperor will be revealed most through the same darkness that will scatter all of the lower quality masculine energies. Now, of course, these don't have to be romantic. I could be speaking internally about something happening within you. This also could be platonic, something happening in the workplace, in your community, etc. But essentially, 
the same kind of darkness that at times you've gone through in life that seems to scatter these lower quality masculine energies also reveals in a more powerful way who the true emperor is, where the emperor is here. Because the emperor is an energy that's very stable, very secure, that doesn't shy away from darkness or conflict, but can hold space for all extremes because they, like you, have found stability within themselves. And I'm just hearing lean into the emperor. Now, for some of you, that might be a person who has entered your life or who is in your life, who is embodying this emperor, someone who's very stable, very grounded and unafraid of the shadow. But for others of you, this could be you leaning into your internal emperor, your internal masculine essence that supports you, that protects you, that stands up for you. So I'm going to be shuffling the Rumi Oracle to pull one final card for this first reading on YouTube, but in the extended version of the reading on Patreon, we're going to be going a lot deeper into these messages. So I'm going to be channeling further details that didn't come up in this reading. We're also going to be taking a look at your aura and channeling information about anyone or anything that might be connecting with you energetically at this time. So if you do feel guided to join me in the extended version of the reading, the link to do so is in the pinned comment and description box underneath this video. The Rumi Oracle card that we pulled is Layla. And the guidebook here says, Oh beloved, how you are to be envied. You are being given the gift of no self, no noise, no sense. The great beloved truly wants you to be closer than ever to the wild universal heart in that field of love. Every electronic device goes haywire, systems collapse, worlds collide, and great stars are born from the chaos, but the real you will sense none of this. You are moving through a period of not knowing, of time in the great void or womb of the Divine Mother. It is in this place the seed can crack open and take root. This cannot happen in the light where all is seen and recognized. It must happen under the cover of darkness where only trust can assure one of success. This oracle brings you ancient wisdom. It guides you not to fear the darkness, but to enter into it willingly. It is not for you to become lost, but for you to find your way. This oracle is saying that in the darkness, there is the path. Do not turn away from it. Let it be. Be with the lack of knowing. Wow, what a beautiful and very synchronistic place to close this reading. If you do resonate with my energy, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Join our beautiful community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram at Magnetize Yourself where I post more energy updates, inspiration, and information. Of course, if you do feel guided to join me now in the extended reading where I will be heading to next, the link to that is under the video. Otherwise, I am sending you all so much love today. Have a beautiful remainder of your day and week, and I will connect with you here again in Monday's collective reading.